I mean, the Zanfif Congress. I never. I said, in fact, let me put it. I said there was a team which helped to undo the dynastic tendencies of Mugabe, of Geriatric Mugabe and his midwife. That's what I said. And then I said, I promised to the president, the new president, that we're going to deliver an electoral victory to me. Then I said, but that team specifically excludes the army, because the army will play the role in. It's specifically because the army is a professional army, it does not get involved in election campaigns. That's what exactly I said. But I don't know why Newsday, for its own purposes, decided to do this and make go, go all over the world that Mchangwa says that the army is there to campaign for Zambia PF. That's not true. And I think this is, anybody can run that uh, that video, and all of you were there. I never said that. So, you know, I have nothing against generous quoting politicians, even if they miscue. But it's another thing to lie, uh, to, to make a statement falsely about a politician. And all of you know that I'm generally very careful about what I say. So that's the main thing I wanted to dismiss. The, the, that I ever said the army is there to contend for Zambia. The army is a professional, non partisan. And you may recall, actually, when we were planning the big demonstration, uh, we refused to, be, to make the demo be identified either as a ZANU PF or a party project. We said everyone should come without regarding. That's what we say. And we still are reaching out to the broad uh, spectrum of Zimbabweans, regardless of political creed, color, religion, race, gender, or any other <coughs> affiliation or classification. That's the position of more veterans as a chairman, and that is the position which I hold today, even still in my government capacity. So I just want to put it to the court straight. Newsday, either they misheard or they are lying. And it would be decent for the news day to own up to say, to not to attribute something which I never, which I never said. Then associated with it, yeah, I am chairman of the World Veterans Association. I believe that we fought for all Zimbabweans to be equal before the law. And when they are equal before the law, it means also opportunities are available, they must be equal without fear or faith. To take a, to make an issue about two or three generals who may be cabinet ministers, strictly under the constitutional provisions of Zimbabwe, it's not fair. And more so because they are, they are ex-army or they've been seconded from the army. You literally are saying that their political rights should be circumscribed because they, were, they used to wear uniform. Now that's introducing an element of discrimination which does not exist in the Zimbabwe constitution. <coughs> It would be unfair for General S. B. Moore to be denied the opportunity to save a government of Zimbabwe simply because he used to wear a uniform. There is no constitutional provision which stops him from that. It would be unfair to say Comrade Dependency should, should not be allowed to become a Minister of Agriculture because he used to wear a uniform. That's not right. That's not the Zimbabwe we want. Uh, there are five people who are allowed by the President. I and mean, the women the president is allowed. And they are all, even though they were not elected, they are all, all, all duly selected according to the Constitution of Zimbabwe. They have as much right as any of you to be in political office. Why do we want them to deny them political office simply because they have a background of being military? That's not right. Do we want a Zimbabwe which is like that, when somebody is stigmatized because of his background? If the president had forced the constitution to accommodate generals outside of its uh, current provisions, then that would be something else. Then the generals, the generals are muscling their way into power. But no, it's according to the constitution. Definitely, I repeat, does the inclusion of General Flynn in the, the, uh, in the cabinet of Trump make, make it a military junta? No. The chief of staff of, General, of uh, President Trump, General Kerry, is an ex pedagogue five star general. Does it make the, the, Ameri the, the American government a junta? It doesn't. Let's be fair to the others in You see, the moment you now make us, we made very tough decisions as young men, younger than most of you. And most of us were between 15 and 20 years. That's when we made the decision to go to war. 
which means we're politically conscious. We're much more advanced than other young men of that generation. And out, out of that war, probably three out of five to four out of five never came back alive because we wanted a free Zimbabwe. Now, as we come back, we save our government in the various ways which we want or which we feel we should save, including in the army. It does not mean that we, are, we, 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 we seize our political, to be political animals like anybody else. More so when, when we were young people, we decided to become political animals. Now I'm, I remove my uniform. I'm trying to save my government. Then you say, because he's a military general, he shouldn't. That's not right. It's not real fair to me. We all want Zimbabweans where, you know, if Lomwane becomes a, a cabinet minister when he was a journalist, is it an issue? And people are not allowed to move from one profession to the other. I am appealing to sense of fairness to the reporting world. And don't try the arm. It's a putting the arm on trial because two or three people. Was, it seems to be an effort to stigmatize the arm. Why do you want to stigmatize your arm? Not everybody in the army is a, is a cabinet minister. So why are you making an issue with the army having two or three of their people become cabinet ministers? Then you say the military, the military this, the military that. No, there's no reason to hate our army. More so when the people who are commenting about the army, they were cheerleading a made woman and a, and a doting geriatric husband in some of the most outrageous political uh, performance, you know, shenanigans which this country has ever seen. Those commentators, they never convinced the, the geriatric and the made woman and the G4 to, to leave office. Your army comes to the rescue to say, look, these guys have used every power at State House. This is not the Zimbabwe we need. The Constitution says this. They restore, everybody is happy now. Everybody is happy that, they, you know, you know, because if we had tried to do it probably at civilian level, this is a matter for law enforcement agencies. And the army had to in because, you know, the police had failed to do its duty. And because the CIO had failed to do their duty. And the army was forced to, in an individual's position, where they could have been an uprising by the people, which then forces the army to intervene in, 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 a, slow, in, a, in, a, in a deteriorating law and order situation. And they do it so judiciously, so clinically, that nobody loses a life. And today, you just hear the announcement, they are all going back to their barracks. Their job is done. Their, the police are being big. Why are we trying to make an issue with our army? I'm appealing to sense of fair play, to sense of fair, uh, to sense of patriotism to the journalist community. Please give our army guys in uniform their job. It's not right to single out your army and then to single it out because one or two generals have been given a job under the constitutional provisions of Zimbabwe by the president. Then you start every saying the army of Zimbabwe has become militaristic. Generals are like this, are like that. Let's just thank them. Rusero, eh, Masunungure, eh, BT, you know, and all these uh, gamut of people who are shouting against the army. They were here when Grace was running amok. And maybe we should have seen their courage to even go and defy they never did. So, you know, let's not, you know, let's not be sulky or jealous about people who do a good thing. Let's just be thankful to the army that it did it in a judicious, clinical, peaceful, and, you know, a way which even the world is ordered. And it has restored the constitution, your constitutional rights. Everybody in Zimbabwe is able to their hand. Why are we making an issue about them? They have not aspired to become rulers of Zimbabwe. In African countries, when generals do what they do, they don't leave state house. Mugabe resigned on his own. Yeah. He resigned on his own when he has seen the realities of the people demonstrating their thousands. Because the army was on the same page with the people. 